tried, but I can't get around the git commands on how to merge uh, that thing and push okay, it let me... so that I can see the tests running uh, Travis AI. Okay, so, so for PNG file uh, reading, let me just record this real quick, sorry. Um, so, sorry, oops, wait. I want to make sure I get this all right and then I'll get back to you on it. So it sounds like you said for the PNG file reading PR, you had issues merging uh, master into the branch, right? Uh, no, it's not or, the issue from uh, from the repo. It was issue from my side. I think I uh, entered a wrong command on okay. the console or something. So I just needed a little help on that. So I can move because I was working on the uh, docs issues and I'll, I think I'll push that in two or three days. Okay. So they're a little slow because of the exams. So I just wanted to clear that thing and then dip so that cool. I don't waste much of your time. No worries. Yeah. Okay. So, did you want to you want to share your screen and, and show me what's going on, and we can walk through it, or? Okay. Sure. How's it going, Yash Ogden? Good to see you guys. Yeah. Let's see. Saksham is walking us through. He's yeah. got a issue with um, um, Git on his uh, PNG PR. So it's showing like you, uh, right. you and have to, your branch origin slash amnesty have diverged. Oh, oh, your branch and origin amnesty have diverged. Did I commit to this branch? Oh, no. Uh, no, you didn't. Okay, let's see. Uh, I know 21. All right, what happens if you do git log? Okay, edit image. Did you rebase on top of master? I think I did something like that. Yeah, that's my guess. It looks like maybe a rebase situation. Try doing, um, okay, yeah, so try doing, uh, what should we do here? What's the right command? I just want to make sure you don't lose anything. You know what? Here's the best way not to lose anything. Um, do git checkout dash b um, mnist backup and then do origin slash mnist. Uh, space origin slash mnist and then enter. Uh, let's see, this should give you, now Now we'll have a backup copy, so then, then we'll push this backup copy up to your repo and that way if we, because we're about to, what I'm going to do is just have you force push, and so if something went wrong, then you know you still got a backup. Okay, so, okay. so should I check out the MNIST branch? I uh, let's see, yeah, check out the MNIST branch, and then just do git push dash f. No worries. That was me last week. <laughs> okay. Let me go. Okay, I pushed one commit. Okay, yeah, okay. So it's a good thing we made that backup because all the only thing in this commit is the images. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's do uh, let's do git merge mnist backup. I think your your screen share might be lagging because I'm still seeing the git push. Just just so you know, if this, that's why I'm not. Okay, let's see. Yeah, okay, so auto merging conflict in source CSV. Yeah, go ahead, check out source CSV here. Let's see what's up. Uh, what? Let's see, uh, yeah, open that DFML source CSV file in your. Um, yeah. CSV. All right, let's scroll through here, see what's up. Um, okay, it looks like. Okay, you want to get, you want the incoming changes here. Well, or, oh, oh, that's what happened. They got renamed to tag. So yeah, change, change everything. I just need this yeah. So you need. So okay. So. We we changed the the label got changed to tag, but I think it didn't get yeah. capitalized everywhere. So for now, yeah, just make it um, you know just just delete the the ones that reference label. Um, yeah, and then uh, yeah, of course, just clean that up. Perfect. All right, yeah. Okay, same thing. Yeah, just leave, get rid of the label ones. Yeah, perfect. Let's see. What else. Oh, okay, yeah, we're going to need to change those label calls to tag call. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't delete it. Just just rename anything that says label call. Rename it to tag call. So I made the change here. So. Uh, well, okay. So yeah, but you see how within the incoming change, the blue block, there's a bunch of references to self .config label call. So just change all those where it says label or label call to to tag or label or tag call. Nice, okay, and then I think, yeah, we're good. Sweet. All right. Um, everything else looks good. Sweet. Uh, yeah. All right, let's hope. Let's hope, yeah. Uh, do a quick check and see if there's any more references to label in this file. Just like Control F. Uh, all right, yeah, let's, can we change that to chat tag while you're at it? No, uh, I think it's change. not, uh, it's not to tag in the file changed uh, from the different pull requests. Yeah. So it'll still be in conflict. Uh, okay. All right, yeah, so this should be good. Let's just push that up. So let's see, git diff. Yeah, do do it do it def first. Okay, make sure this all looks good. All right, sweet. Yeah, go ahead and you can probably do a git add dash a. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, wait. It looks like that comment did change there. So let's see, it says grab tag from row was deleted and grab label from row was added. So let's go and change that comment and then let's delete that new line as well. Uh, well in this line? Uh, yeah, so on this line, change just change that to grab tag from row and then delete that blank line above it and then it looks like we're all good. Sweet. Okay, yeah, now you can do git add dash A. <laughs> 
or well, probably don't. Maybe don't so do it. There's key. this grab key from now. Oh. That looks fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Let's see. Yeah. So jump back to the terminal here and do a get status. Let's see what do we got. There's an image.csv file. We don't want to add the image.csv file. So let's just say um, do the do a git add dffml slash source slash csv. And then yes, yeah, so let's do that. And then yeah, it looks like and then and then go ahead and do git um, what is it commit? Yeah, I believe you can just do git commit. Yeah. Okay, add PNG source or something, yeah. Sweet. Okay, let me just go over here and check this out. Make sure we've got okay four commits. Sweet. All right, this is looking better. Okay. Um, okay. Sweet. Um, Okay, so this is looking like I think we're we're back to where we wanted to be right now, um, so that's good. And then let's see, all right, yes, this all looks good. I think we're back to where we wanted to be here. All right, sweet. Um, so and then the last thing is um, just uh, let's see. Um, what should we do now? Um, do you know? Well, uh, oh yeah, change log. Okay, it's change log because it's no, it doesn't have conflicts. There's just no addition to the change log. All right, so you'll probably have to merge in master again because I don't know. It looked like your last commit on master that that you had tracking from upstream was not the same um, as the one that's there now. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that's been happening recently, so that's that's why. But uh, you'll probably just need to merge merge in master when you start working on this again, and then. Uh, okay then you should be good to go. Sweet. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, and I would also say it might be good to make another backup of it in this state here. So, like, you know, uh, you could probably do git branch dash D, the backup, uh, the MNIST backup, and then check out that branch again from where you are here, um, and then push that up to your repo. That way you still have, um, you know, another copy of this right now, because right now it's in a good state. Okay, okay. Cool. Thank you. Well, yeah, if that's, if that's all for you, then uh, get better soon, and good luck on your exams. Well, thank you so much. Uh, and also, can you share the uh, recording of the... Uh, oh, yes, I will share the recording, yeah. Yeah, I got it. I've got a recording here, I hope. Yes, we are recording. Perfect. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, thanks, Sakshan. Have a good one. Get well soon. All right. So, all right, Yash, Agen, um, so I saw the NPM audit stuff come up. It looks like, I don't know if you got a chance to, to address the stuff that's in here yet or if you need any pointers, Yash. Um, did you, did you, have you, have you had time yet or are you still just haven't had time? Or do you need any pointers uh, yeah. on it? Uh, the NPM stuff was done, I think. It got merged. Oh no, the and uh, and should it, so uh, npm stuff is still or wait did it get merged? Oh wait, why is it yeah, still uh, open? It was, wait a minute, did we forget to pro close this one? Wait a minute. No, this, this was the last period. I mean, uh, it is not the latest one. Oh wait, yeah, we did. Oh yeah. Oh okay, my bad. All right, I thought I thought. 
Okay, I thought this got fixed. Okay, great. All right, sweet. Um, all right, okay, I'll close this pull request. Awesome. Yay, done. <laughs> cool. Okay, so yeah, let's just make note of that. So uh, npm audit was merged. Okay. So. All right, so yeah, and then you were going to start in on, on Rust stuff? Yeah, I, I was looking for the backtest package for that. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Just find the package. Yeah, you've got this down now. So, and and then, um, and then there's gonna there's a couple CVE scanning related ones that might be a little more tricky. Um, but yeah, probably hit. I would say Rust the cargo audit stuff is a good next target. Um, and uh, so let's see, uh, cargo. And it, I I saw that uh, uh, that you have uploaded I should regarding turn. Which which is uh, oh container uh, scanning which can, yeah container scanning one yes yes actually it's funny because uh, so the I can't remember but basically there's there's that yeah turn turn I think it was and then there's CV Ben tool and DFFML they're all GSOC yeah. projects this year and uh, they're all thinking about well turn is I think CV Ben tool was Turn was thinking about using CV Ben tool maybe or something like that. I can't remember what it was, and we're yeah, yeah, obviously yeah, thinking yeah. about using both of them. So uh, that we'll, we'll see how that goes. It'll be it'll be good. Um, I think this this we're gonna have a quite the scanner here when we're done. Um, but yeah, so those are gonna be a little probably maybe a little bit more involved. Um, mostly. Uh, We've got some stuff with the data flows that that Agan and I are working on um, to kick off these various operations because right now we're obviously just writing the tests for them. Um, uh, uh, let me just make some notes here. Um, currently, currently we're just writing uh, the operations and tests. Uh, soon we'll be writing the data flows, um, which will run all the operations for each language, respectively. So what that means is, okay, if codebase is Python, run Python or run safety and bandit. Uh, if Rust, run Cargo Audit, and then uh, if, yeah, and then et cetera, right? Um, yeah, yeah, JavaScript, go, and then if uh, Codebase is stored um, in Git repo, uh, run DFML feature uh, Git um, operations. Uh, which needs to be renamed. Um, uh, I'll leave out that comment. Um, and also, there was that one, um, there was some tool, um, where was it? Let's just try to capture this here while we're at it. Or, well, I think it's on the project board, but just so that we're all on the same page. But yeah, so. Validate, identify language, kickoff subflow. Oh, get vold, get vuln, vuln finder. This looked pretty cool. It basically, like looks through the git logs and tries to see if any of the commits fix a vulnerability, so that you know, uh, basically, like what what yeah. project this is. And so, yeah, that'll be cool. So what we'll do is we'll say, you know, if if starting a git repo, then we run the git uh, dfml feature git operations and run git vuln finder. Um, and then if there are any binary files in the code base, uh, run CV Ben tool. And so now we'll have like at the end of this, we're gonna have a pretty <laughs> this <laughs> this scanner will be will be pretty pretty dang capable, and, and we're well on our way with uh, you know we got Bandit and now JavaScript and 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 the GoLang scanner. Thanks to you. So thanks for doing that. This will be. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have something that we can just point at any code base and it'll tell you everything that's wrong with it, which is gonna be very handy. Um, I mean, this is I mean, it's similar to like these these software as a service things like LGTM and um, and like Deep Source and, and a lot of these 
these SaaS static analyzers. Um, but yeah. the reason why we're doing this is that, you know, we want to use all the open source tools um, so that it's very transparent and anybody could run it or combine it with their SaaS scanners. Um, but yeah, so yeah. that's that's the goal here. Also, also, we can add more uh, languages for the code base. Yeah, exactly. We yeah, we can keep and, uh, adding languages and keep adding scanners. Um, and this thing will get very fully featured. Um, yeah, this is going to be, there's a lot of, I've, I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this and, and people are excited about it. So this is a, this is a sweet, sweet little, I, this is a sweet project, should I? Um, so yeah, is there anything else you were thinking about it? Any ideas you had for things you wanted to add? Uh, no, I was just thinking for adding C++ or kind of thing because that type of languages are more popular and are more used. Ah, uh, yes. So, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll basically, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But the tricky part about C++ and stuff is a lot of the static analyzers actually have to compile the code. Um, and so this gets into like, okay, how do you compile a C++ project? And that's basically the problem that Himanshu is fighting with right now um, on the Vopal Rabbit models is uh, you, you, you need to install all these different libraries and stuff to be able to compile it successfully. Um, and so we'll, we'll need to make sure that the tool can figure out how to compile an arbitrary code base, which is in itself going to be a very interesting exercise. Uh, and also like the greatest thing ever, if we can make that work, cause that would be super great. Um, I don't know how much experience you guys have with, with C and C++ projects, but this is basically like the biggest, biggest annoyance ever. Um, it's yeah it's really bad um so we can figure that out that will be a cool cool sub thing on its own um so let's see. let me just make a note of that yeah uh, c slash cpp eventually uh will need to figure out how to compile all right sweet cool um, anything that you need from me then right now or sort of just chugging along? Yeah, I, I'll update you on the Gitter channel on the further updates. Great, great, sweet. All right, yeah. thanks, Yash. So Thank Agen you. has I know I, I didn't I didn't get you that diagram. I have started creating it though, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, things have been pretty it's hectic. Fine, so like, uh, I asked the same for me, same for me. Like, I've been working on that input validation thing. Uh, oh, yeah? Validation validating, but I still have the time to finish it. Okay, well, that's okay, because uh, that thing was very confusing. I can't remember where we last were with that. but. Uh, we still have to add that. Like, we have to specify operations should be validation operations. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that one is tricky. This one will be really sweet, though. Um, I was actually, I was on the. Oh, I didn't. I don't. I not can't remember if I told you guys, but I was. Uh, I was on a podcast over the weekend. Um, they're going to release it soon, and I'll send you guys the link. Um, but uh, we were talking about DFFML and um, you know what what kind of stuff we're doing, and I mentioned the input validation because it was a security focused podcast. Um, so yeah. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, I'm ho I'm hoping that security people will be excited about that. Oh, it'll be good. Yeah. Um, I want, and then the other thing is like, oh, yeah. sorry, go for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah no, 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 no. Yeah, I was just thinking, um, you know, we've got, we've done a lot of work on the data flow stuff, you and, you and me, and, uh, and, okay. and Yash is now starting in, in the data flow space with operations, and it'll be good to make some more demos, because um, should I is really like the only, we've got that one example where we scrape Git yeah. features, um, but that's actually going to end up in should I too eventually, right? As soon as we detect Git repos. Um, and it would be nice to have some more examples of how to use this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Also, uh, one example that that I really wanted to do and wanted to do for a while is a, a WebSocket-based one, like maybe a chat-type application. Um, actually, I think we talked about that with the Gitter chat, um, the Gitter chat yeah. bot. Yeah, we were like we postponed it till we start finish that auto start. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So that'll be, that'll be a good one. Oh, and I also still owe you, I know I still owe you the, um, uh, 
the full example on the async iterator. Yeah. Um, so the, other than that, what I've been working on lately is, I mean, obviously you've seen, you guys have seen um, emergent stuff. Things are moving. Um, but uh, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do right now is, is since we're really getting heavy into Google Summer of so Code season, I, I need to, uh, Augen, you, you're, you're on a good track and, and I, I do want, I want to get these things to you, but you're also like, you, you know what you're doing by now. Um, and we're having yeah. people who you've been around for longer than, than some of the other new people. So I need to make sure that, that we've got some, we're able to onboard people. Um, so that's kind of what I've been trying to do within the past few weeks, but then, and then I'll get back to more like, okay, sort of long-term projects when, when we settle in. Um, yeah, cause right. Yeah, I actually wanted to ask you about that. Like, uh, are there projects finalized? Uh, do we have something related to data flow or stuff or are those well, kind of final projects? So those actually, I'm going to go update. That's part of, part of what I'm talking, trying to say is that, um, with basically i've i was looking at those projects and um and let's let's just go look at them right now um i should put that on the website too mm. okay yeah so we've got the should i tool we've got the doc testable examples and we've got adding more models um and so these were just kind of the things i threw out there i'm kind of thinking there's one guy that went through and started doing doc testable examples um and then we've also got a few other we're, we're adding examples to the plugins i'm not so sure that that project yeah, yeah, I, I, I saw that too. yeah that that's that I, I was thinking that that would be a great project based on that one person who jumped on the Gitter a few months ago and was like, hey, I need help. Like, you guys need to document your stuff. <laughs> and, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we all went, oh, yeah, yeah that, that would be good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, so I think, well, I think that would be good. I think uh, I'm not... I think it will be like a more of a long-term community yeah. effort. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of worried about having... Uh, about about throwing throwing somebody into the fire there you know um so i'm going to leave that one up of course but i'm also going to add new ideas um because i'm uh, like we're talking about demos and stuff i think we're into a place right now where uh, where we can start focusing more on more on how do we use this um because we've we've been adding a lot of features and a lot of models and a lot of stuff um and we think we need more clear, concise examples of, of how do we use this stuff. Um, I actually, I sent the link to a couple of my friends. Uh, some of them found it a bit difficult because yeah. they didn't really go through the operation demo because it was really it's too long. And yeah. Most of them, yeah, most of them skipped it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like they and that's... The idea, but they, they all complained about the lack of demo. Yeah. The lack of demos? Yeah. Okay. See. Okay. Like, then uh, this is great most feedback. Most of them preferred. Yeah. Most of them preferred short, concise demos rather than uh, yeah. long stuff. Yeah, and all the demos are way too long right now. So the yeah, MNIST one is going to be sort of the first concise one, even <laughs> like there's there's the command line usages of the models, um, and those yeah. those are pretty quick and short and sweet, right? But as far as Python API yeah. with the data flow goes, like there's nothing short and sweet right now. Um, yeah, yeah, and I think that, like that even I had trouble at the beginning uh, yeah. the operation because in one sitting I I I didn't really read through. Yeah, it yeah, really it's it's too long. Yeah, I agree. Um, so this is, and let's let me just bring that up here so we can take a look and sort of try to visualize what what. Oh, that's another thing I'm doing. I'll get that to a second. Yeah, and and part of it is because you know there's multiple like we're interacting with a bunch of external tools here, so it's like okay, yeah. like I now I have to understand that tool. I have to understand that tool, and. So, and then I have to understand how to grab stuff from the PyPy API. And so I kind of think, yeah, it just gets out of hand, right? Um, yeah, so, and, like, I don't think we're not, not everything, like, gives something more. Like, some of it gets repeated, right? right? Yeah. You're writing the same operation again. Yeah. So when people want to know how to use this thing, they're, like, seeing the same thing again. And yeah. Like, that's some feedback which I got. Yeah. Okay. That's great. That's great to hear. So let's see. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for getting feedback on that. That's awesome. So let's see. Operations uh, need more concise demos, tutorials, and demos. 
uh, operations tutorial is too long. And actually, I was just I was just about to move. I wanted to create a new tutorial first, but I was going to move the should I one into the use case use cases area um move should i into use cases because i feel like those are sort of more long and drawn out examples is what these are supposed to be yeah. right like this automating the classification this is not i mean this is not short <laughs> this is like i mean yeah this thing is long right but it's meant to be it takes time to do that also but yeah. it gives you a sort of of good understanding what someone has to sit and do that and yeah not everyone exactly it's meant it's meant to be a complete example right and that's the thing yeah, is yeah, we're like yeah. like and uh, we've got we've got we've got a few complete examples here uh but but not not any that are really easy to just pick up and run with right. um so and i think i think like i think for operations we probably want to cap this at like maybe three operations or something for new uh, operations something yeah like that calc was actually a good example okay the, the calculator having text cases yeah okay like something like that something simple which shows that how these things work yeah okay yeah that's that's true yeah that's that's let's yeah let's 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 just put that in there for now maybe um okay. if, if we if like, have uh, i was thinking when i when i plan to do the chat thing no we maybe we could split into stages and like have a tutorial with such yeah. stages of each uh, one continues on the other one yeah and actually you know if if when you if you when you do the chat one it might be good like you're saying stages we can have a very we can have levels of tutorials right like we can have yeah we can have like the simple simple operations tutorial calculator now complex operation yeah. control tutorial involving configs and stuff is going to be the getter one because that's going to have configuration yeah. parameters and such um so let's see so for new new operations tutorial um simple calculator example and then complex uh getter chat bot yeah okay sweet that's great okay i'm glad thank you for going and getting some feedback on that so oh and the other thing that i was going to say is i'm currently in the process of simplifying the model api um so in in progress simplifying the model API, and I can't remember how much you guys have dealt with the models. Uh, I feel like you have touched them, Agen. That's just uh, one for the regression one. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just I'll show you real quick what what the new API is going to kind of look uh, like. But here. the API has changed a lot. That's yeah, it lot. has changed a lot. That's true. So basically, <laughs> what I'm going for here is we. I mean, we want to. the The purpose of this is really like, okay, what this needs to make the tutorial we we need a way to make a model that makes the tutorial make a lot of sense right so in this yeah. case like this is what we this is sort of what i've ended up with at this point um and I, it maybe could be even simpler but but basically you import import the stuff you create the config um and then okay, this is just the doc string obviously showing how to use it um so you set the config you say this this is just sort of some helper stuff that will really only be with the linear regression i think but like you know what are the number of supported features and, and what is the dimensions um so you know you can only have a single value then you use your init method like regular um these are just this is for saving and loading data you can access self.storage um then these are these are specific to linear regression. Obviously, these are just some calculation functions. Um, this is also a calculation function. And then train, accuracy, predict, and that's it. Um, so no con no model context, basically. We fake oh, that nice. stuff out. Yeah, because I realized, obviously, I that needed to happen to standardize everything, but it didn't need yeah. to stay that way, right? Okay. So, so well, under the hood, everything needs to be following that because without standardization like things became a mess that's how it used to be it was a complete mess um <laughs> like it, it wasn't really so much a mess as as everything needed to be written in a different style and now basically like the coding style is very consistent right as we're using these various objects um so this i think makes it a lot 
a lot more straightforward um but it's still not maybe not not perfect right so i'm gonna probably merge this and then ask for feedback um because unless i put up the issue um and i think i should comment back in this saying that this is sort of the um so let's see uh so this this is like what we're what we're looking at and if anybody has any comments great if not i'll just merge it and we can we can just leave that issue open until we've probably like a few weeks yeah. from now when we actually agree that it's the best way to do it so yeah any any thoughts on this immediately or i i i go check it out and cool uh the other thing that's going to happen here is we need to finish um so finish transitioning or finish uh deprecation of old feature class api um so replace um feature with basically replace feature with def feature or basically make def feature the new feature um, because the way that this stuff used to work was basically the feature classes and Yash knows this well because he went and and and, and was the one who took out that code um, but the way that this used to work is these feature classes were actually a, sort of the equivalent of the operations um, now this led to massive headaches when scraping uh, for example like if you're running multiple things on in should I say for example you ran bandit and safety at the same time and they both created files in the repo and tried to cl they clobbered each other by creating files in that code base um, well that's what happens when you run git git creates files when it runs so that you can't run more than one instance of the git command at the same time so you can't run git in parallel on the same code base um, so all those dffml git features they had to implement a bunch of like locking mechanisms within these feature classes which led to this giant mess um, and so that's why we have the whole data flow api is because you can say this type needs to be like this definition is a data type that needs locking and that way only the operations like the orchestrator will take care of locking the different inputs so that no other operation can use them uh, while that one operation is being run um, which made it a lot more straightforward. Do we have this part in the docs? Like, uh, this locking part, I think it's very, I have never it's, heard of it before. Yeah, so it's this actually, easy. that's a very good point. Um, that's one of the key features. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't uh, features, but I oh yeah never heard of it. oh geez oh man i did not do a good job documenting that okay um so yeah, need yeah, to yeah, document like, well, I haven't heard of it. <laughs> uh, okay let's see uh managed locking okay and this is going under so this is gonna go under so simp so basic Let's let's change this operations tutorial a little bit. Config um, and managed locking. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is a key this is a this is a great this is a great point um so yeah if I, if that is not clear that is not good um it's just, that is like the whole reason for the data flow api no no it's not in there it's not in there <laughs> i think there may be one sentence somewhere but i it's not that's not a good answer um so yeah um yeah so so this needs to be in here um okay and that and that's that's good because that's sort of it's it's nice to have i think three is a good number for examples here because then we can have one one example on the operations basic calculator stuff one example configuration based you know here's how you do a getter chat right so we have one operation that just waits it comes up it uses a config to grab the username and password of the bot right 
and then it okay. uses uh, and then it connects to Gitter or maybe it's like IRC because I don't know Gitter might be more confusing. Um, uh, I think I think with Gitter we might need like you know OAuth and stuff and and we probably don't want to mm -hmm. bring in OAuth to some yeah. little example uh, that that will scare people right off. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so some kind of chatbot probably IRC then um, and then manage locking. So, um, and this, this could be maybe an example of Git operations or, um, s ooh, actually, I think I had another one that was, so this could be, uh, or BenSec, um, which is, actually, I need to ping this guy, um, github.com slash until slash dffml. So there are these, there's this whole set of operations I have. So the thing is, I had several things where I was gonna write more tutorials, and then it just didn't it didn't happen. Um, and one of them was this binary security analysis operations. And basically, what they do is they look at an RPM. Oh, and these would actually be great to combine with should I? Um, yeah, so let's yeah. see. Uh, run git on it there, but and bin sick operations. Okay. Okay, yeah, so basically what this does is um, it pulls down, it, it reads, so Linux distros that store their their packages in RPMs, it reads the list of RPMs from the distro, or you give it the list of RPMs, it downloads each RPM, looks for binaries in it, and then checks mm -hmm. if the binary has this security feature enabled, which is a very important security feature. Um, and it, the, what this does is it randomizes the location of code within a binary so that if someone's trying to exploit the binary, um, then they don't know where the functions they're trying to use in their exploit are. Yeah. Um, so basically, this helps you do a quick analysis of, like, does this Linux distro... The idea was... was can does this Linux distro like how how good are the is the security features are all the security features turned on by this Linux distro right that would be the 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 end goal of this whole thing, um, but what happened was the guy who maintains this RPM file library, uh, Sean S Ross Ross, he he's he's busy doing something um and i've asked him a bunch of times if i can help him take over maintenance of this thing but but i think he's busy so i'm gonna have to ping him again um and we'll see if if because I've, I've been doing i i did the last release for him and i've got this release ready for him but then these oh, operations yeah. will be sort of good to go and oh the point of this was the rpm file requires a lock <laughs> so <laughs> that's why we're talking about this sorry yeah um but yeah so so this stuff is let me let me make a note that i'll i need to ping him so let's see uh ping sean for rpm file maintenance okay all right, yeah, and so all that may be a good one. It's kind of, it's kind of a nice one because you can say it's it's basically just. Mm, it may not be a good one because it kind of is like, it's like open this file and do this thing. We could we'll come up with something that's mm -hmm. simple, right? Like, I don't know what it will be. It may be just something where we have like an open file object, right? So if you do with open file. And then you you pass that through. Obviously, that will only work within the memory orchestrator um, because you can't serialize a file if we have some other orchestrator that that does the stuff over the network. Um, okay. But yeah. Oh, and that's actually that's another thing. Speaking of projects, um, so uh, there. Okay. So so there's only the memory orchestrator right now, right? Um, so we only have the memory orchestrator right now. And this is something that I've been meaning to talk to you about because I think it's something that you might be interested in. Um, but we need to find a way to make this run on multiple machines, right? Um, so, and, and the way it's set up right now with the input network and, and everything, like I tried to abstract it so that it wouldn't 
Um, I tried to abstract it so it should, it will hopefully be easy to make it run in some sort of distributed setting. Um, we probably will have something that is like, we, we may just like spin up, I'm not exactly sure yet, but, but my guess is at a minimum, so the idea is figure out how to run uh, data flows in a distributed way. Um, so we'll probably involve um, starting in or so let's let's just look at the code real quick. Um, so the current main loop here is basically there's that that there's that main there's the main loop of the um, the the uh, the orchestrator right um, and that sort of dispatches the operations. Now yeah. one way to do this would be to have um, let's see. So the orchestrator dispatches them within the operation implementation con or operation implementation network context. These class names are really long, um, but you know it's a network of operation implementations. So all right, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at least they're consistent. Uh, so let's see. So yeah, we've got we've got this network of, of implementations, right? And so what this probably involves is that we'll say, we'll implement, and this is where I need to get you a diagram um, because it'll make this more clear. But w if we implement one of these uh, memory implementing uh, a, let me just say base, operation implementation network context network slash context um, so we need to implement one of those that's basically going to sit where the orchestrator sits right um, so the, the orchestrator will see it sees the operations and the and it sees the data flow right so you load the data flow into the orchestrator and it says Okay, I've got I've got this data flow. I need to run it. Well, how do I run it? Right, I send the inputs to the base uh, input networks, right? Or I send the inputs to the input networks, and I run. I ask the operation implementation networks to run the the parameter sets that I get back. Right, that's the basics of this thing, right? Okay. Um, so what we might do is we would implement. Um, we would implement some sort of like uh, we we probably have this tie up to one of those like distributed message queue things like zero MQ or, or rabbit MQ um, or I think there was this one called Nats that looked good um, Nats uh, I think it's written in Go yeah or Nats.io so this looked like very promising. Um, so basically, yeah, this this is like it's a distributed message queue. So what we would do is, imp what, where's the notes? Okay, so implementing a operation implementation network context uh, that publishes um, uh, dispatch or operation dispatches to a distributed message queue. Um, and then we have, so publish, let me just say, so we publish operation dispatches to distributed message queue. Um, and then we have workers waiting um, for or workers subscribed to message queue um, which run an operation um, 
root run dispatched operations. Um, and I might need to, I'll probably need to make a diagram. Um, but, uh, but basically, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Do you see what I'm saying here, or, or this probably requires uh, a diagram? I, I, I kind of, kind of get it. Uh, okay. How to? Yeah. Actually use yeah. Okay. So, yeah, and, and and this and this, but but since you're in the data flow stuff, I think I think that you'll probably this would be like you would learn a lot from this, and I think I think that you're yeah, you're, yeah. you're capable of doing it this if you propose mm -hmm. this, right? Um, but of course, you know, you're open to propose whatever. Yeah. Um, so the idea here is basically the every time there's an input added you are going to add that input to maybe like some distributed database, right? That allows the, uh, uh, yeah, you're, you're so gonna- Is it like a master slave connection type? Like, do we have like one master node and many- This is, or yeah, so, the, so at this point, I don't, so at this point, yeah, it's probably like a, you know, a, a, there's a the primary node, which is, this the orchestrator and then there's all these worker nodes right and so the worker nodes the what we'll probably do at first here is you would have um, something that's you would have something that runs a memory um, so create a service um, so dffml service dev create service dffml service um, uh, node um, yeah so this is like you know the distributed node right so and this node so it uh, on start we uh, create an we create a operation implementation network um, and have it load some specified specified operations. Um, so, for example, we might have you know uh, node A is running uh, loads operation implementations okay implementations especially right now so node a loads operation implementations uh let's see like bandit and safety um and then node b loads operation implementation um golang ci lint um, oops. All right, well, copy paste skills not good today. Um, let's see, make this one, two, three, that'll make it easier. Or no, let's not do that because then we should be starting at zero. All right, let's see. Okay, so let's see load operation NPM audit right so if we're going with the should i example here right okay. um and then so yeah we load we have it load the specified operation implementations right so each of these nodes might be um each node might uh is just each node is just a process running um, a, it's just a it's just a process, right? So basically, like we'll start this command line thing. So dffml service uh, service node. So like we have this thing, three terminals or three nodes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You'd have three different terminals open. And of course, you know, if you wanted to run it on three different machines, then you would just, you know, open those, you know, you would you would maybe SSH into three different servers and, and run it on there. So DFFML service node run um, bandit um, safety 
uh, or let's see, run run bandit, run safety, right? Um, so, oops, yeah. Um, just put these guys in here. Um, run. Okay. Yeah. So, for example. Um, um, and then, so what these guys would do is, um, they would have some config parameters for their, um, operation implementation network, which tells it how to connect to the, to the, you know, distributed how to connect to the network, uh, or the, there's too many network. Network is overused. <laughs> um, so, well, I mean, this is like so. Each of these are a network, right? Because they have multiple nodes in them. So, uh, connect to the um, uh, what should we call it? Um, connect to the other uh, nodes. We'll just say, and the primary orchestrator um, okay so they talk to the other nodes through the primary orchestrator right yeah, well so they will talk to the other nodes through we could have so this is where this is where we could do this a lot of different ways right and this is where like it's a, everything's everything's a plugin um, so you could implement one of these that maybe sits behind the HTTP service um, as like a as a test thing um, so you know we have that HTTP service um, you could do something mm -hmm. where like it hosts a few websocket paths and uh, okay. and then you have Actually, wait. Uh, let me let me not explain this more because I think I might I might make things more yeah, confusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's yeah, there's just like a million ways to do these things. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, basically, it's better once we figure out all the other stuff and like once I get a better hold of yeah. all the other flowers, I'll, I'll figure again on this. Yeah. Yeah. So so but basically what we'll do is you know we'll you're going to implement a new operation implementation network that lives with the orchestrator right and the orchestrator is going to be in charge of uh you know dispatching operations right so it will wait in a queue for new inputs right and all you have to do to if you want to swap out where it's getting those inputs from well you just implement a new input network right um so so you may have something just just I'll, I'll make a diagram, but basically, like, you can imagine, imagine oh, yeah. you have, like, two, you have a Gitter channel and you have an HTTP service, right? And you okay. are telling them, uh, so you're running one data flow that's, that's listening on the Gitter channel, and you're saying that, that data flow, just, this is on some other machine, right? Its input network is, God damn it, um, its input network is uh, backed by um, it's backed by like you know one of these message queue things, right? So whenever it receives an input, it sends that input into the message queue. And whenever the HTTP service somebody you know does a GET request to some URL, it says, "Oh, my input network is also backed by the same message queue." So now the they send their they just add the input like they usually would, same APIs, right? They're just you just told them on the command line when you ran the data flows, okay, use this input network and here's like the connection parameters. Now what's going to happen is the orchestrator, you've configured it to have an input network that is, it's also the same input network. It's all connected to this network service that's the message queue, right? So when you send, when you add a message in either the, the you know, when, when the Gitter operation outputs a message, um, it gets added to this input network or when the HTTP service outputs a message or like has a new input, it gets added to the network and the orchestrator sees those transparently of where, where they were running, right? Because it's just listening to this message queue. Okay, okay. And, and then when it dispatched the operation operations, it 
dispatches them into this operation implementation network. And this implementation network is also backed by the message queue, but it's a different set of like channels that are being listened to or subscribed to, right? Um, so basically we're publishing, you know, we may have like a new input channel and that's where all these input networks are listening on. And this might be a dispatch operation channel um, within this message queue service. Um, and so when these nodes here, they they will be listening for you know anything that matches the operations that they have in their network and they're going to say oh i just saw a operation was dispatched for this uh for mm -hmm. like a yeah i want you the the message queue told me that we want to run this operation with these parameters okay I'm going to run it because I have that one locally, right? And then it publishes the result back to the input network, same thing, and the orchestrator picks that up right away, right? Um, yeah. So, and I'll make a diagram of this because, and this is, I think that helped. I was struggling to figure out how do I make a clear diagram, but I think I have a better idea now too. Um, but that's, ideally, all we have to do is implement the, the input network and the implementation network and things should sort of just flow from there um we'll see how it works because we'll probably also need some sort of like persistent storage um because in this case um in this case we're talking yeah we're 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 publishing and subscribing to a queue here right so we need some sort of way of overlaying because when we do the output operations well like you know we can't query a queue the queue is empty now um so we'll have to back it by some other database as well um but yeah yeah so does that make a little more sense how that might work uh yeah kind of Kind of, yeah. I'll, I'll make a diagram. It's uh, I, I wouldn't expect that that was immediately clear here. So. All right. Yeah, but yeah, it made little sense. Can you note that like you just showed me a side note? What would you say? Some nets. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So this is uh, so let's see, uh, possible message queue we could use nuts um so and also so one of the so k native all right so one thing that i want to do is ideally we'll, we'll put this thing on top of kubernetes at some point because everybody seems to love kubernetes um and so this is the serverless uh this is like the serverless framework that is built into kubernetes um so the 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 thing about this is you have to know you have to have kubernetes set up um so that's kind of like I don't, I don't know how this nats thing works but i've tried to set up kubernetes and and, and it, ain't, it ain't pretty sometimes um so so which is why i say we might want to just go with this like single binary nats thing that's built in go or whatever and statically compiles and it's probably very easy to deploy um as a first target right um and but long term we'll want to do kubernetes what uh sorry you cut out on the last part okay so basically ideally this is long term we want kubernetes right uh short term this might or nats might be easier might be easier for proof of concept um i don't know i mean it may be it may end up being that may end up being that kubernetes k8 is the abbreviation is easier we'll have to see uh before we start implementing um but yeah so basically long term we want to do this in the in the kubernetes native stuff um but i know you can also sort of deploy whatever you want on top of kubernetes so you could deploy the nat stuff um but i i do, it depends it depends on what's easier to sort of we want to proof of concept this first um, to show that it works. Um, and as you can see, like this is this is not straightforward. Um, it, it might be more straightforward, and I just don't understand. But like I, I haven't. 
yeah, yeah. I have to read for it. Yeah. I know he was in your yeah. So that that that's that's sort of this is the ideal target is is Kubernetes and and their pub sub system is is K native eventing. Um, so that would probably be what we would use there. Um, but yeah, that's sort of just like that's a that's a long term long term goal um and we might be able to make it's something that i think uh if you're looking for something that you wanted to propose in this space it would be a, a it would be definitely a solid a solid proposal um um just make sure that you that you do some background research first so you know what you're scoping on right like yeah, what, what's the scope um of this project so yeah cool um, I think did Sudarsana or no Hashim joined. Hey Hashim, is this your first meeting with us or I can't remember? Did you jump on last week? Yes, man. Hey, we can barely hear you. Still, still barely hear you. Oh, there is it we're... better? Yes, much better. Yeah, it's my first meeting. Cool. Hey, thanks for joining. Agan and I are on right now. Um, I think this is this this meeting has gone long, um, but uh, yeah, I just saw you there and and I wanted to say hi. Um, just real quick, Agan, did we are you, are we good on on things that you and I need to talk about right now or? Yeah, uh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. I I read more on this like. Cool. This cool. Yeah, and I know, uh, yeah, I, I'm sure you've got exams and stuff as well, so, so, yeah, yeah, yeah good, yeah, good yeah. luck with all yeah, that. I'll, I'll get back to you in a yeah, sure. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, thank I'll you. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Hashim, how's it going? Uh, it's good, how about you? Good, good. And I'm John, obviously. Um, so, let's see, you'd been, you'd been working on the doc testable examples, right? Yeah. All right. So, um, let's see, where did that stuff go? Okay, yeah, so as far as that goes, let's see. Um, so, dark testable examples. Okay, so this project, um, and we were talking about this earlier, kind of, um, but uh, this is kind of a beast of a project. Um, and, uh, right, it's sort of like how I mentioned in the issue, like, it's however you scope it, right? Um, so if you were, it, depending on what you want to propose you do here, it, it might be like you want to do a lot, like it, you, you probably need to, to, to get a little more in the weeds here. Um, I was trying to give you some of the ones that are going to be hopefully a little easier to deal with at first. Um, I'm hoping that we can, we can get you some that are like, I'm, I'm hoping that, that, that these, that that the other ones are not too difficult, basically, um, because I was realizing that that this could quickly become a very difficult project. Um, yeah, you and me both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Yeah, for example, here. Um, so we play. We were playing around in record, right? And that's that was good stuff. I think we merged that, didn't we? Let's see. Yeah, we did. Okay, great. Yeah, that was great. Thanks. That, that was perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for uh, here. It, it isn't complete yet. Uh, it was just two functions. Yeah, that's okay. Um, and I know I said go ahead and do the whole file, but you know it was good. Um, so I just went ahead and merged it um, because you know it's better if if something's in a working state basically. Uh, so I, you know, we talked about like you know should we do a function by function or should we do the whole file? Um, yeah. You since you last time I saw it when you had worked on it, it was like, this is a, a working, this is, a, this is like a working, um, all, all of it was good to go and it worked. I just thought, let's just merge it. Um, because we of course want to get things in as, as, as soon as things work, whatever it is, whatever piece of work that it is, like whatever, whatever, you know, chunk of, of work that, that was being done is working and within the code base, um, we want to get it we want to get it merged in so that other people have it and it's in the documentation. Um, so yeah, the other thing is that um, uh, what we should do is just just so that we're both clear because I obviously just went and merged that and, and while that worked this time, it may not work in the future. Um, so if, you're, if you don't want me to merge something, 
uh, prefix the title with uh, WIP. Um, so uh, if something uh, is not yet ready to be merged, um, prefix the PR title with WIP. Um, and that will let me know that I shouldn't merge it for sure. Um, because or else, if I see that it's working, I'll just merge it. Um, okay. So that's just 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 so you know, um, so that I don't I don't accidentally merge. Because sometimes I, if you have like a really big change too, like I will read most of it. But if the CI test pass, I will trust you that that you did what you said you did, <laughs> um, and I'll merge it. And yeah. and they may not be really ready. So we've, we've, that that has gotten us into trouble in the past. Um, so yeah, that's right. just so you know. Um, but yeah, so as far as the doc testable examples go, we've got so a few people have been adding some some of the code examples for the uh, the plugins themselves. Um, now the doc testable examples has to do mainly with like the main code base here, um, and the there's. It's just I'm trying to figure out like okay where where do we go next here um, that that eases you into things um, because there's basically the high level API and record and then there's like all of the various models um, themselves um, or like that's mainly what people are using is the models and then the sources um, but uh, the models sort of have their own documentation um, and the sources. Uh, Need a little need a little beefing up here. Um, and, well, they all have the same API, basically, right? So the models and the 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 reason why why I'm why I'm trying to figure out what to do here is because for every model and every source, it's always going to be the same API calls, right? So we don't really need to to write a, a an example in each one, right? We need to write one for like the main source class and the main model class, um, but in which, in in those cases, like they're abstract methods, so they sort of just get documented by the usage examples within the plugins themselves. If did that make sense at all? Because what we've got here is we. Sorry, your voice just cut out. Okay, so I was just saying I'm trying to figure out. I, I'm still sort of in the process of trying to figure out what would be a good next target after record, and this may change. Like it may it may change into sort of a different. Um, uh oh, this is not good. Um, it may change into like it, it, it. This this project may not be a great project idea. Is what I'm saying. Um, I will be putting up more project ideas. Um, if you're still interested in working on DFFML, but I don't know if this one is like a super great idea to have someone work on for a long amount of time because it might end up with a lot of frustration um, because the way that the, the test harnesses work and stuff. Did you hear? Did you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna put up some more. I'm gonna think through this one. Um, and me and the other mentors are gonna are gonna think through it, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna make sure that that we have good suggestions on what to do here. And uh, in addition to that, we're gonna put up some more possible project ideas, and uh, and and we may just take this one down if it turns out that this one is maybe not something that that would be good. Um, just based on the fact that like a lot of the stuff here that would be done is um, oh yeah now I remember what I was going to show is sort of like in this memory data flow stuff file and this file is very confusing and not very documented um, so it's not really a great thing to have um, like for you to be just fighting trying to figure out what to do in here um, when you could be working on something that that would probably be more helpful to the users of the project, right? Um, okay. So let's see. Oh, and the other thing I was going to say is what I was trying to say is because a lot of these classes are abstract base classes, um, you can't really write an example like a, a testable example for the abstract base class because it'll just throw the error that the method is not implemented right. Um, so and like these these models, uh, each model that's a plugin has its own or will have its own soon like example of how to use it. So I'm not quite sure 
um, we still need to figure out like because some of some things definitely need it um, but we'll have to figure out like what what things those are and and that may just be sort of like you know community bonding period work here um, where you're trying to figure out what you might want to work on um, so oh yeah hey this is up already sweet it looks good um, the, uh, the documentation auto builds so but other than that right if you're looking at so if you want to keep if you want to keep going on the records and then I'll ping you when we've got the rest of the project ideas solid um, that's that would be great um, because obviously the rest of this would be helpful to have filled out um, and then yeah uh, I like that actually yeah, it's this is like this is looking great in here, and and the other thing is that that if you wanted to do like if you wanted to do just straight documentation as well, and not just the examples, right? Because this the title of the issue is doc testable examples, um, and this like you 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 know how to write the doc strings too, which is good um, because I've noticed that not a lot of people. Uh, understood well how to write the doc strings um, and so that that would be helpful um, if, if you're also like since you're capable of doing that like basically we could rescope you could re-propose the you could make the proposal something that's like okay I'm gonna write the doc strings and examples for ones that are applicable it doesn't have to just be examples um, but yeah like this is what I'm saying it's like in here all of this stuff needs to be documented more um, and so like this it's kind of it's pretty it's kind of complex um, but it could use some documentation other than that anyway so other than that um, there's a lot more sort of issues in here um, and a thing that might be good to work on if you're sort of just like looking looking for stuff around the code base is, is data sources um, and like for example um, so there's one guy that's working on implementing thing like what I guess what are your areas of interest that you that you like working on uh, well uh, I us usually I like to uh, work on something related to machine learning or data science although okay. I'm a beginner over there but yeah all right cool so yeah, so we've got we've got three main aspects of the project, right? There's the data sources, there's the machine learning models, and there's the data flow stuff, which is like data set generation and feature engineering. Um, yeah. And so, if you want to play around with implementing models, um, I'm about to publish a more simplified model API. So basically, the the idea behind models is that you implement three functions: train, predict, and accuracy. Right, so one function trains the model based on the incoming data. One function function assesses the ac accuracy based on that some data, and then the last function gives you a prediction, you know, based on the trained model. Right, so that that's that's what we're shooting for. For that's how you would implement a model. Right, so if you wanted to sort of yeah. start like, well, while you're here figuring out what do I want to do with the FFML, uh, one thing that we always are looking for is like wrapping popular machine learning libraries. Or implementing something interesting from scratch. Um, so, for example, there's you know there's a lot of papers out there that implement various things. You could even you know take like one of the state of the art papers and like they don't. Part of the reason for DFFML is that if you look at the state of machine learning, um, the field, right, and you look at like the code and the research that's getting published out there and the and the code that goes along with the research, you'll see a lot of IPython notebooks. Um, and that's all well and good, but that doesn't help anybody else really, like except for researchers and data scientists. Um, and we're trying to bridge the gap between uh, researchers and data scientists and like software engineers, right? And make it really easy for software engineers to come in and use use some of this state of the art stuff, right? Um, and so if you're like looking out there and you're like, oh, this paper looks cool, and here's their code, and here's how they implemented it, well. And then you could be thinking like, okay, how would I, like, I, I need to take this code and convert it to a way that, that works within the DFFML APIs because that would allow somebody who's like a software engineer and not really familiar with data science to use these high level APIs that we have to s just feed in the data. Right. For example, if you had something that did like, uh, you know, object detection or something, right? Well, 
the, the software engineer has a bunch of PNG files, right? And they know how to give you PNG files, you know, in, in a list, right? They know the file names. That's what they know how to do, right? And so what we're doing is we're, we're abstracting this machine learning process to the point where we say, okay, the data source knows how to read in these file names and get the bytes out of those files. And now we pass it to the model and the model may, you know, use some of that code from that, you know, that researcher's IPython notebook, but adapted to use the rest of the DFFML APIs um, so that you could, you know, train this model on new, new, new data sets, right? Did that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so basically, and, uh, and, and right now, sort of, the, there are a couple models in there that, uh, in the code base, that might be good to reference to see how that works. Um, but I'm about to publish, basically, I would say, like, if you continue on with the record stuff, like, I'm aiming for end of today or tomorrow to have this simplified model API and update the model tutorial. Um, so that should hopefully make it really clear, like, what, how you would go about adding a new model um, if you wanted to, to do that. Um, yeah. So, and then other than that, the data sources, um, adding new data sources is always a very useful thing to do. Um, it sort of depends, like, you know, what kind of stuff you've seen. Um, for example, with the MNIST example, um, Saksham recently added uh, a, he recently added a uh, uh, IDX file parsing format, which is the format that the MNIST images are added in. So if you have like some problem that you're working on where the data sets are in a specific format, format it might be, go, uh, might be good to, to add a data source that knows how to read that format. Um, but yeah, these are basically the kind of things we're trying to do with this project. Um, and then on the data flow side of things, we're looking for uh, its feature data set generation to assist with feature engineering. Um, so we're trying to write operations. Uh, that's what we call the, the the things that get run in these in these data flows is is an operation, right? And an operation might is usually something that scrapes some piece of data, right? Um, so you could you could maybe have like for example, if you had uh, if you had a uh, like a list of a list of cities and um, a list of cities a month and the number of ice cream cones sold um, during that month you might want an operation that grabs a city and that takes a city and a month and gives you a temperature um, and that way you could take your existing data set which is your city month and ice cream cone sold you run this operation that takes a city and a month and gives you the, t the average temperature. And now you could train a model that, you know, predicts what is the number of ice cream cones. You, you would, you would run that operation. You create a new data set, right? Uh, yeah. And that would let you train a model that, that lets you predict what is the number of ice cream cold cones sold based on the temperature. Um, yeah. And so that's that's what we're trying to do with that that data flow side of things. So if you can think of like, you know, places like and and one person was talking to me recently about Wikipedia and how there's a lot of data in Wikipedia and you can do this sort of offline dump and, and query that data. Um, that may be too much of a project, but but just as an example, right? You could you can think about like, okay, what data sources would be interesting to combine uh, with existing data sets that you might have or like use to create new data sets um, because you know, there's 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 a lot of things that we could be training just in the world in general. There's a lot of things that we could be training machine learning models to understand, right? But we need to first like make a data set where those two things are c connected, right? And so those the operations help us gather the data so that we can do that. Um, so this these are just I just wanted to sort of give you an overview of what we're doing here um, and and things that you might want to think about so you can you can feel out like what do I want to work on and what kind of thing do I maybe want to propose working on um, because I'm also going to post obviously project more project ideas um, but you know if if this is you know what you're interested in if you're interested in machine learning and data science um, then these are these are the things we're doing here and you know you want to think about what interests you and, and how can you make those overlap maybe right because um, we're also looking for demos
right? Like, we're our goal here is to make it really easy to use machine learning. Well, you know, okay, so let's think about how might we use it, and then write up a demo uh, documentation for like how did we do that using DFFML, right? Because um, the, right. the the goal is to be super easy, uh, super straightforward. You know, I have some data, I want to model. What do I do, right? Um, so yeah, cool. Do you have any questions for me at this point, or? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I mean, I didn't really get where are we going with the GSOC project. I mean, uh, like uh, some specifics would be nice. Uh, what yeah. Are you thinking about, about posting. Yeah. Oh, about like other projects or this project? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, this one's going down, right? Well, so this one, yeah. So basically, I'm I'm kind of think that this one might not may may not stay in its current state. Um, it would either change into like a document everything, um, like the parameters and stuff and return values, um, like you'd done, and then examples where applicable rather than like focused on examples. Uh, and I'll I'll share the recording of this meeting in the meeting minutes as well. Uh, to uh, document uh, args and return values uh, and then add examples where applicable um, uh, due to complexity of harnessing tests for various APIs. Um, TBD to be determined. All right. Um, so yeah, basically that's that's the takeaway there, um, uh, and that'll be within the next week. Here, I'll have more 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 info on on changing or maybe removing that. Probably just changing it to be you know not so focused on making a doc test for everything so much as documenting everything, right? Um, and then tests where applicable. And then as for other ideas like. Uh, they'll probably be focused around like specific like maybe I might have an idea we might have an like I need I need to talk to their mentors first um, but you know probably ideas around like you know demos like I was saying or uh, data adding more data sources um, because like that hasn't really been touched in a while um, and also uh, there's work to do on the web UI um, but I'm not so sure about making that a project idea um, since we are mostly a Python project um, and that's going to be all in JavaScript. Um, so I'm not sure yet. I need to sort of check with the, the Python org admins to see, um, to see if this is something that we'd want we'd to have as a project idea. Um, but if you've got any familiarity with JavaScript or, or wanted to learn that, um, there is going to be work to do on the web UI as well. Um, and that, that sort of also correlates with there will be work to do on the backend server side, which is written in Python. Um, so that's sort of just, we'll, 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 we'll have that more information on that soon. I just need to, need to check in and, and make sure. But yeah. Right. Cool. Uh, and that uh, the demo one sounds uh, cool as well. Yeah, that's. I mean, and that's sort of just like you know, I'm, I'll we'll we'll try to we'll try to brainstorm some ideas of like possible demos. We've had a few, and there's a lot in the meeting minutes. <laughs> there's a lot in the meeting minutes that like we've thought of demos, and uh, and then forgot uh, and then forgot to make issues for them. Um, but also just sort of like anything you can really think of that you might want to propose as a demo. Um, and for the scope of GSOC being like a whole summer, you might want to consider proposing like multiple things, um, especially in, unless you have to do a bunch of writing of code within the DFFML code base to make it happen. Like for example, uh, if you wanted to propose, propose something to do with videos as a demo, we don't have a lot of, we don't have any infrastructure set up right now to deal with processing videos. Um, so, and actually that could be a project on its own is, uh, let me write this down, possible project, uh, so, and somebody's been working on images right now because we didn't have anything to deal with it, images until recently. Um, so videos, um, 
uh, enable videos. Uh, demo on videos. Um, so yeah, so if you if you ended up deciding that your demo wanted to do something with a video, well then you're 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 probably going to be only doing one demo for the whole summer if that's going to be your proposal, um, and you'll need to like sort of think about what you want to do, and then look at what does the FFML able to do right now, and then say, okay, I'm dedicating some amount of time for making it able to do this demo, and then some amount of time for documenting the demo, and you know, then obviously tests in between there. You need to allocate allocate time for unit tests and stuff. But yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, and as far as proposals are concerned, the the basic idea and, and format is like, okay, you want to say, what what are you thinking of doing? What you know? How long do you think this will take you? And then um, you know, we're looking at at things like you know, what what work have you done within the repo and and within other repos to show that like that is a reasonable amount of time for you to complete that in, um, because we want to make sure that like you're estimating accurately so all right cool and then obviously i'm on gitter uh if there's anything else or i'm, I'm still free for a few minutes if you have any other questions um but yeah what do you any any other thoughts there uh no that's it thank you cool yeah thank you it was uh nice meeting you and uh we'll uh, i'll talk to you next week maybe or you know whenever whenever you next want to jump on the meeting sure see you soon all right, see you. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.